Okay. Um, so I'd like to uh, gavel in the meeting of the Village of Woodstock Board of Trustees meeting on Tuesday, October 11th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Um, the first item on our agenda, and I will remind people that are here or at home, the agenda is available online. Um, there is over on that table, there's a, a QR code and a website. So if you want to join in and see what we're doing, it's available right there. So the first thing on our agenda tonight is citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments? Anybody on my button? Okay, seeing as- I'm sorry, I have one via Zoom. Okay, yeah, please go ahead. Can you give us your name and where you live? I'm Jacqueline Porter, I live in Woodstock. Um, a friend and I had been talking about this event that I saw happen in Vancouver, where the night after Halloween, so November 1st, all the folks <clears throat> in the town brought their jack-o'-lanterns to the town square. So in our town, that would be the green um, and did a last light the evening of, and then they'd partner with local farms. So the following day, local farmers would come pick up the pumpkin shells um, and bring back to their farms. And I spoke with Kathy Avellino and she suggested that I come here to see number one, if it's too late, I teach at the elementary school. So Halloween always sneaks up on me. Um, if it's too late to set something like that up for this Halloween. Um, hmm. I mean, there would need to be a coordinator. We would need a permit for the green. The permit mm -hmm. the problem. The problem I think is um, having someone coordinate uh, the pickup and right, and then the removal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this might be a neck. I love the idea. Um, I think if you had more information about, like, is there which farmers? Like, yeah. yeah, would somebody take it, and how would people get there and talk to the. Uh, or fire chief and make sure that you like light things on the green that it's not going to like light the green right. on fire those okay. sorts of things um i think if you had the answers to all those questions then we could talk about it a little more we might need to have a special meeting for it okay uh, but yeah but it could be done if we could find if we had reliable uh, pickup in both okay stations. yeah um, and i would say that uh one of the things with the permit on the green is that there is a insurance requirement. Um, okay. That might be something that- Not for this. You know, fire on the green? Um, within pumpkins? I don't know. I mean, it would be similar to like the luminary light during Wassail weekend. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that might just be something that the chamber might be able to help organize if they okay. have the bandwidth. Um, and they certainly know how to use the green. Kathy obviously manages the market. Right. And, um, so I would say talk to her a little bit. I mean, I think I'm amenable to having the discussion about it, but I'd want to have all those things answered first. Okay. So if I can get more information on that um, to you, I'll reach out to. Uh, Nikki would be the person you'd want to email. Okay. Nikki Norse. I'll email Nikki Norse. Okay. Right. Yeah. Gib, do you have any thoughts or anything you want to add on that? No. Okay. But you know, it is, uh, that, Jackie, it's a lovely idea. I do want to point out that a lot of people don't, aren't sure about what we're doing with Halloween. And uh, just to let you know, um, as in the past, uh, High Street, uh, Maple, and um, Golf will be closed to traffic from, uh, what time, Chief? From when to when? Do you remember? Generally 5.30 until about 8.30. Uh, from 5.30 to 8.30, so it's safe for trick-or-treaters. And I know we're spending some money on candy, and I hope the select board is as well. Yes. Um, so uh, it'd be great if we could get something on the listserv to let the public know that mm -hmm. this is happening as in the past. Could you arrange that, Tom? Sure. With the hours, like the chief just said? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, so Great, follow up with, with Nikki, please. Okay, we'll go. Are there any other citizen comments in the room or on Zoom before we continue? 
Okay, um, the next order of business is additions and deletions from the posted agenda. Um, I am just want to add that I want to talk a little bit more about the logistics of the candy on High Street and the distribution and possibly asking people for donations to that. Um, so we'll put that under uh, old business number four. That's okay with the trustees. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, Gabe, uh, Brenda. Yeah, sure. Okay. Any other additions or deletions to the agenda, trustees? No. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the manager's report. Tom, what you got? Um, I just wanted to let everybody know about the, uh, the additional uh, pickup efforts that we've had to do this year. Um, it's been uh, really, really brisk in terms of uh, um, the amount of trash that's being deposited on the street and on the greens and the park. Um, so we're essentially picking it up every day now. Uh, we pay Casella to do it four days a week. Um, and um, the uh, town crews are doing it every other day uh, that they don't pick it, the Casella doesn't pick it up. And uh, we'll continue to do that until we don't need to. I would suspect it's going to really slow up after this coming weekend. Yeah. yeah. But we'll just keep an eye on it. Yeah. And because um, I think it was last weekend we got not just past the weekend before, <laughs> weekend before we, got, before, we got really it shocked. Was really bad. And, and yep. uh, some of the people, like the seeds and trees people, they were emptying it themselves. On oh, our really? So some citizens were doing pitching in too. Oh, but man. it's uh, we need to remember next year to do what you're ne doing now yeah. sooner. Yeah by a week or at least yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah and make sure all the cans get put out the, the old ones. the old ones yeah yeah for this time period yep um second item i would like to report on is the woodstock elementary school parking lot has been reopened to the public on a limited basis as in the past it's uh now open on uh, weekends, holidays, and it will be open during the summer closure. And that's from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, the signs that were up uh, in previous years are now back up by, by um, the entrance to the parking lot and on uh, School Street um, so people can find their way to it. Um, and uh, our uh, temporary uh, but yet full-time town hall administrative assistant, the new one is actually here tonight. This is Brittany, for those of you who have not met Brittany, or, excuse me, Brittany. Um, <laughs> she will be here uh, well, through, the, uh, through the rest of the year uh, as uh, Nikki is all. Uh, the fourth thing is uh, the National Park has applied for a grant to improve trails in the park and the trail leading from the park to uh, the Rainbow School, Play School on Route 12. Um, and it's a, an unusual situation in that the funds have to come to a, the local municipality. Hmm. And that we just, well, we actually do pay the vendors. Uh, and uh, they approve the expenditures as they come in. So it's it's strictly a pass-through. And we've done this before. Um, and uh, I think it was a few hundred thousand dollars that they nice. applied for, but uh, very competitive. So uh, I bring this up because, you know, uh, because it technically is a town of Woodstock grant, but we don't really use the monies other than in the park. Okay. So it's, Okay, so you're saying the funds must pass through to the town from the village? Is that no? No, so it's from not. The, it's not the, in the village. From a federal What's funder. From the federal funder. Yeah. Why was it the grant for that area? It's a town or village? Oh gosh, uh, that's an interesting point to me. Just wondering why. <laughs> why? Yeah, it's just a pass through. So no. we, can, we can do it in either one. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I understand. It's just that uh, the physical location I think, yeah, is, yeah. is in the municipality of the village. Oh, yeah. It's also within the town. Or part of it is. Yeah. Part, part would be town, part would be village, right? Mm -hmm. Because Rainbow's but actually in the town. Rainbow's right over the line. But where it would start, would start be would be in the village. Yeah. 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 
So that's why I brought it up here. So okay, just, just, so curious, yeah, just yeah. curious how that worked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, could you give an update on our search for the Public Works Director? Thank you very much. Please. I forgot to do that. Um, yeah, we're still interviewing. Um, um, I haven't closed out the applications yet. Um, if anyone's interested uh, or know someone that uh, is qualified to be a uh, Woodstock Public Works Director, uh, encourage them to, uh, to apply or contact me. Um, and we uh, have been doing a little recruiting too. Um, so, and that process will continue awesome. until we are satisfied. Awesome. Yes, please, Jeffrey, go right ahead. So just a couple of questions. Um, are we going to schedule, we talked about this at our last meeting, um, uh, uh, a time for uh, Ms. Macy to present her findings to the two boards? Uh, yeah, she is not going to be able to do that. She does not, the LCT does not permit her to really take the place of the staff when it comes to presentations to the board. Mm -hmm. So we are meeting, Zoe and I are meeting with her for extended period on the 18th of this month. And um, we'll get organized so that we can do that instead of her. Okay, yeah. thank you. And finally, um, and you may not know the answer to this immediately, but you know, we look at warnings, and we try to understand them the best we can. Do you know why Elijah received three $250 payments in July, August, and September beyond what is understandable for his normal pay? Yeah. Uh, the agreement with uh, the former public works director was that if he worked over 90 hours uh, in a pay period, which is two weeks, he would receive an additional $250. And uh, and he did that. Oh, most of that was towards the end was uh, really getting prepared to depart. He put in a lot of hours to close out as much as he possibly could to help out, and uh, so that was that was all about. Well, thank you. It just wasn't obvious. Yep, that's all right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, those are all my questions. Okay. Um. Gabe or Brenda, do you have any questions about the report? I do not. Okay. Let's move on to the uh, financial report from the general manager. Uh, yeah, just a, I guess a summary overview. The target number for this report would be 25% uh, because this is really for the first quarter. Uh, and just about in all cases, we're at 25%, with the exception of office administration, which we discussed earlier. I think a big part of that is uh, the salary that's coming and expenses that are coming out for the manager search. Okay. Because this, is, this jumped another 5K from last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It keeps going up. So, Tom, there seems to be a major error at the start of this report in, in that. Um, We've, we've received uh, almost all of our real estate tax revenue. Yep. The bills haven't, I mean, I think how, how is that possible? I think what's happening is just, it's just, it's just wrong. They've just closed out or will close out the amount of revenue that the village would get. And then the, as the rest of the money comes in, no, but I mean, the actual, that shouldn't uh, be there, correct? Yeah, I see what you're saying because that is. I have I can't raise my hand, but I do have something to say. Yeah. So it, it actually this question gets asked every year, multiple times. That is all the billable, um, everything that's been billed. So it's actually going to equal the same. And then in um, January, we actually take out what goes to the county, what goes to education. And there's a more realistic number, but that's just how this is done. That number always comes in as everything that's been billed. Everything that's been billed, even though it's not actual, it's not received. Correct. Everything else in that column is received. Funds. Correct. Yep. That's the only one 
that is what has been built versus what has truly come in. And that, again, that happens every single year. Well, I, I don't know why you would do it that way. I, to me, it's, that's, it's, it's confusing in terms of the bottom line uh, because we don't, you know, we don't always get paid everything that, that gets built. And as you said, yep, that gets and that adjusted gets adjusted. Later. I mean, that's just the way it's, it's a receivables. That's the way that the town has always done it forever, 40 years. <laughs> Does it make it right? Is that an accounting practice? It sure is. It, it's, okay. um, mm -hmm. but you asked me this last year too. I mean, I, every year I, it, it always happens this way. It, it's always what gets billed. And then we deduct what doesn't come in what's in what's um that's just the way it's done um, i'm wondering about further down on this page uh, where the village clerk the actual is zero and it, last last month the actual was four hundred dollars there must be an explanation for that Yep, it actually is four hundred dollars. Um, the village clerk was paid in FY twenty three, and it should have been in FY twenty two. I had to do a manual entry and bring that back. Okay, okay. that's why it's missing. Okay, yes, sir. Those are all my questions. And for those of you who don't recognize her voice, that's Zoe Parent uh, oh. on the line. <laughs> She's our accountant. Sorry, I've left. I've pulled over to be able to answer questions. Oh, thank you so much, Zoe. I appreciate that. Um, okay. Um, Gabe, do you have any? I do not. Brenda, do you have any questions about the finances? Okay. Great. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next item on the agenda is the police chief's report. Robbie, come on up. So, getting ready for winter? Yes. <laughs> it looks good. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, so paving will begin tomorrow, just so folks are aware. I'm not sure if they'll get done this week because of the weather coming up Friday, but they are going to uh, be doing it tomorrow. So for traffic purposes, it's not going to get much better. Uh, Halloween's coming up. We already talked about that. So that was on my list. We'll have the streets closed down. I'll have some additional officers on duty. So we'll be good to go there. Just a reminder, uh, the emergency services building, the police and fire department will have our open house on October 22nd. That's a Saturday from 11.45 to 3 p.m. Uh, come on down. Free food, uh, tours, uh, fire trucks, police cars, kids can touch them and uh, should be fun. So, you said at 11, what's the time? 11.45 to 3 p.m. Great minds. Um, Great minds. You probably saw Sergeant Swanson uh, was cleared by the Attorney General's office. Not unexpected, but still great news. So we're happy about that. Uh, September was National Preparedness Month. We shared preparedness tips on our website. So if you hadn't had an opportunity to look at our website, it's on there. Do so. Uh, Traffic's been heavy, as we all know. The crowds have been large, but uh, by and large, they've been orderly and um, not any real problems in terms of lawlessness. So we're happy about that. And for the meters, um, I will say that this past weekend, over $3,000 in meter revenue uh, came through on the, on the back end of the system, which was reported. But uh, for September, uh, we had $15,998.74 in meter revenue. Uh, 4149.10 was kiosks, 6705.64 were meters, 5144 was Park Mobile. Compared to September 2021 was $15,642.95. So we beat 2021. Uh, 2020 was 10,000 in 2019. Um, just for comparison, it was 13,000 a little. Yeah. So the, the new meters, I think, are certainly um, uh, performing well. And we haven't had any uh, real problems with them. And the companies have been very responsive in terms of servicing them. And uh, 
That is my report. Oh, Jeffrey, I think you had last asked uh, asked last meeting about the crashes. I had reported about the governor's highway safety. So just uh, uh, and I mentioned that crashes were up statewide, nationally, really. Um, however, we are down. Uh, we're only at about 37 percent of the number of crashes this year versus last year. Uh, so far this year in 2022, we've had 10 crashes, seven of them with injury. Um, compared to this time last year, we had 27 crashes, six with injury. So we're doing really well uh, in terms of uh, traffic safety and uh, in large part that's because of our enforcement efforts. And um, so just that was to answer your question. That's interesting to know. Chief, I have a question. Um, which some people have actually been, have asked me, besides all of us who read the listserv, your your view on having a, an officer directing traffic near the, I mean, on Elm Street in Central uh, during peak foliage time. Sure. I don't think it would uh, be effective. I think it'd be, the, here's the reason. There are 10 crosswalks between the west end of the green and Tribal Park. And it's not the left turn that is causing the holdup. It's the fact that people are stopping for people in the crosswalk. And then there's people that hang out in the bulb out. Today, I, I had the same thing happen to me. Somebody's hanging out in the bulb out, but they're not crossing. I stop for him and then he waves me through. Okay. Uh, the other thing is the reason years ago they had an officer directing traffic was because you could make a left turn there. You can't make a left turn there anymore. It's a right turn. It really negates that, and it wouldn't be. It would be a waste, I think, of money because I would ask for you to put it in my budget to have an extra officer there for those two weeks if you were going to mandate it. So, uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> As an aside, it's almost like people woke up and discovered they lived in a town that's a tourist destination. We go through this every year. It's not. It's nothing new. You just have to be patient or plan. And if you're local, you know where to go around or you avoid the village. That's just the way it is. It's it's not anything that I think we need to put a person out there, an officer out there, who, by the way, could get hit by a car as he's out there, even with a vest on in the middle of the street, for no good reason. There's the, the, the fraction of cars that turn left are not what's driving the hold up in traffic. It's, well, the volume of traffic and the number of pedestrians crossing the street. In terms of people starting out, not, not using the crosswalk, for instance, uh, the one officer there in the street isn't gonna be effective because again, you've got that entire stretch of Central Street to the west end of the green where people are doing it. The one officer is not gonna be able to control that. Uh, and aside from that, there's no, there's actually no specific jaywalking statute in the state of if a pedestrian causes a crash, they can be ticketed for mm -hmm. causing that crash. Mm -hmm. But there is actually no, I can't stop somebody from jaywalking and write them a ticket for jaywalking. It doesn't exist. Well, and so that's my opinion. That's where I come down on it. Yeah. Now you know. Well, thank you. I happen to agree with it, but I wanted you to say publicly uh, because sure. I've been here a long time. You've a lot longer than I have. And, and you know, you hear folks say that, you know, this, when there were some voices of reason on the list, sir, in my opinion. Uh, which said, hey, wait a minute, you know, years ago, you could be backed up to the White Cottage. It's not backed up. It's maybe, maybe to the rec center on the, some of the heavier days. It'll be over in a week. Um, it's just one of the, and we should be happy for it, I think. In my opinion, it brings a lot of folks to town, generates a lot of revenue. Be crying without it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think some people have moved here fairly recently, just haven't seen as much traffic as we've seen this year. Um, so they thought they left Boston traffic behind. No, <laughs> but uh, this doesn't last long. As, as, as you couple, just said, it's a couple of weeks out of the year. Yeah, honestly. And so, even some of the so what have, you, what have you found out about River Street and cars parking on the sidewalk? So as we know, there, I pointed out, there is an ordinance. Uh, and I'm glad you brought it up because I just asked folks in the audience, if they're listening, uh, do not park on the sidewalk. It is, in fact, uh, an ordinance violation. You can be issued a parking ticket for it. Um, I did go by that location today, and by the time I got there, there wasn't actually anybody parked on the sidewalk that I could see, uh, or there was any. Actually, there were no cars parked along the cemetery when I went by. Um, but if you do see some kind of illegal parking or any other illegal activity, for that matter, 
please uh, call dispatch. Don't send an email. Response may be delayed if we don't read our emails in a timely manner. Uh, but and what's the dispatch. number for dispatch? It's 457 1420 is the non emergency number. 1420. Yep. And um, so, but we'll keep an eye on it. And, uh, and in fact, I wrote a parking ticket uh, earlier today to somebody parking beyond the signs. We're just, there's a lot of cars, a lot of traffic. We're just, Cite them as we see them. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I, I have one for you. Yeah. Um, I just wondered um, the crosswalk that goes uh, to the post office, and they're across the street from the post office. There's a handicapped parking place and then regular parking place. Um, it, would it be possible to move the handicapped parking place? back one and not have a parking place because people that are trying to cross at that crosswalk, nobody can see you till you're halfway out into the street. And I'm, I'm surprised there hasn't been, uh, maybe there has been someone hit there. We haven't had anybody hit there, but your question is really a trustee's question. They would dictate whether or not they wanted to move that parking space. Okay. You'd be losing a net space. Uh, the state generally will put a handicapped space on the end of the row, of course, because it makes it easy for that person to get in and out of the vehicle. Right. Uh, well, I would still it's set, it did, I will say this when the state came through and we did the paving, they did a lot of measuring when it came to our parking spaces, as you all know. We lost some. And we lost some because the, the spaces weren't set back far enough from the intersection or from the crosswalks. That one is in compliance with with uh, state code. Okay, but have you ever crossed there? I have, yeah, and you have, and just like any other crosswalk, you do have to be careful that when you're stepping out, they they can see you. And there's a number of you know blind spots. I call them blind, maybe not. Bentleys, for instance, you've got mm -hmm. one in the end. Yeah. Any cars that sit close to the curb is going to create for the drivers, you know, some sort of barrier in terms of them seeing them which is why it's incumbent upon not only the driver to be careful, but the pedestrian to be careful. So I just, okay. you know, that's my answer, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Trustees, does anybody have any, Brenda? Do you have anything for Robbie? Thank you, Thank you very much. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. Okay, let's move on to the next item on the agenda is permits. So we've got a use of the green permit for book stock. I think they sent the letter yes. in advance because they weren't going to be here. Yeah. Um, so the person who put this through is not able to be here. Uh, I guess that's Peter. Um, we've got the application and the um, completed certificate of, in, of insurance, which are the things that we require. And I assume they've paid their fee, right, Nikki? Correct, they paid. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a copy of it. Okay. Um, so it looks like this is similar to previous years, uh, Thursday, June 22nd until Sunday, June 25th at 5 p.m. They're anticipating about 1,500 people, 12 tents, uh, 40 booths as they did this year, I believe. Um, does anybody have any questions about it or concerns about it, trustees? No. Do you have any? No, no. Okay. I would make a motion. Okay. I'd make a motion to accept the permit uh, as presented. Book stock on the dates as presented and the times as presented. Okay. Um, do you want to second? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Yay, Bookstock. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, under old business. This is the old fire station fund. Um, this is a vote to disperse $2,000 from the old fire station public trust fund to be used for village tree work. This is a fund that uh, had 
was being managed and was recommended to us by Jill Davis, who manages the funds for us, the trustee of public funds. Um, she recommended during our conversation last month that we um, use it for tree work because we've got a considerable amount. Um, so we approved it last month, but this particular fund requires that there is a public vote. Um, and so that's what we'll do next. So anybody who is a resident of Woodstock um, village. village may vote on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask for a vote. Um, all in favor of dispersing $2,000 from the old fire station public trust fund to be used for village tree work, say aye. 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 Okay, keep your hands up guys. One, two, three, village. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. And two. Oh, and Brenda, six says I. Uh, anybody? What? Two. Yes, that's me. Two. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, seven. Seven, seven eyes. Are there any nays? Okay. Uh, the vote to of seven to zero. It passes. Thanks, everybody. Next item on old business is the temporary structure ordinance. Uh, trustees will be turned to page 11. So this was a continuation of a conversation we've been having about Tribute Park. Last month, we discussed that we wanted to, um, that there was a safety concern. And so what I did was took a first stab at um, creating an ordinance of uh, which says, um, which amends Title IX, Chapter 1, Section 9101 under the definitions of words and phrases. Do you want to look at it? Anybody wants to look at it, it's here. Um, and it would add under number seven, um, a definition of Tribute Park. The definition would be, would say, Tribute Park means the public land between Central Street and Pleasant Street from the corner to the property line abutting 42 Central Street. It then revises Title IX, Chapter 4, and it adds a Section 9403 to read, no temporary structures or signs, including but not limited to banners, tables, tents, or stages shall be placed, and Jeffrey made an amendment, uh, made a recommended amendment, shall be placed on the ground in trees or in existing permanent structures in Tribute Park without a permit. Um, since this is something we're going to discuss, um, I take any, are there any technical questions about this? Do you have a technical question or an opinion? Well, I don't know if it's technical or not. It's about signs. We hold up signs. That's not what it is. Yeah, it's yeah, we'll give you just a Placed minute. in the ground. In the ground. Yeah, so, okay. so this would be in the ground, on a tree, on the cannon, on whatever. This is not being held. This is temporary, being attached to something or on the ground. Uh, are there any other technical questions? Brenda, Jeffrey. Okay, with that, we'll open it up to, um, to public comment. Is there any public comment on uh, this revision of the ordinance? Okay, we'll move on to discussion of the trustees. Trustees? I like, I like, I, I like it. Uh, Based on it has it has no uh, implications whatsoever for people who are currently using uh, for public discourse uh, Tribu Park by, with their signs and with their feet. So this doesn't interfere with them or anyone else who's the First Amendment rights or want to be practiced on that over there. But I think it protects public property. And again, with the addition of the words without a permit means that even uh, we could still grant permits for someone who wants to place a table there. If we, if, if we or some future board deems that to be a good idea. So I like the way it's worded now. Gabe? I'm, I'm good with it. You're good? Yeah, this is okay. good. Brenda, who sits and stares at Tribute Park all day, said I'll, I'll sit with you. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think uh, what, what will happen next with this is we need to um, not vote on it quite yet because we need to take it to a lawyer. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so sure. we'll take the changes that Jeffrey has made. Everybody seems to be okay with it. So we will pass it by legal people to make sure that this all makes sense. Next month, we'll come back. If there are any additional changes, we'll discuss those. And everybody's good with those changes next month, um, pending the approval of 
a lawyer, we will we will vote on whether to pass it or not next month. Awesome. Thank you so much, trustees. Moving along um, is an update on our municipal manager search. Dave, do you want to talk about that or do you want me to talk about that? Um, I haven't. Okay, that's good. That's later, good. So you, that's you quite all right. Um, okay, so uh, as of, so the last update was uh, last month, uh, we put out uh, the ad for a new municipal manager for Woodstock. Um, it ran in multiple publications, sent out lots of different ways with our, our contractor that we use. And the first date to have things in was last Friday. Um, the uh, the contractor that we're using put together a group of the the first sort of a first tier and second tier group of people out of the 25 resumes that were sent in. Um, he sent that to the committee yesterday. Um, the next move is for us all to sit and read hundreds of pages of resumes. <laughs> and then on Thursday, the committee will meet um, via Zoom and uh, we will, because it uh, has to do with personnel, we will go into an executive session to be able to, to discuss the candidates and we will um, decide on which people will be interviewed. Um, and then after that interview process, we will take that information to both the select board and the trustees um, and provide them with that information and our recommendations and see who they want uh, for the second round of interviews. It's a good group. I mean, we, we have, a, yes, we have, uh, I mean, we have nine viable uh, resumes. So of, of candidates we can interview. So that's pretty, that's pretty strong. Um, I think the effort that was put forth in getting um, our contractor and having us, having him help us really uh, market this position um, and really uh, offer all the benefits of living in Woodstock and performing this, this work here uh, in this community uh, actually has worked very well. It, uh, it was, it's really been a very, very good campaign for us. I That's think encouraging. It, yes. Yeah. So, um, and I think the review is this Thursday, isn't yeah, it? Yes. Yeah, so we have this Thursday, we're going to review uh, all the resumes, but uh, nine really, really uh, good candidates are, are at the front. And there's a couple in the second tier, which yeah. I, I've reviewed these as well. And uh, there's a couple in the second tier that, you know, might, might make it to the first one after discussion this Thursday, but at least we have nine people that are really interested in the position and coming here to, to work in this community and, and, and broad, help us move forward. Yes. A broad group, different yes. backgrounds, different ages, different geographical areas. Correct. And a few people uh, who are just, uh, who just really seem to be uh, drawn to this place. So it's exactly what we want. So good job, Woodstone. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for making us look good. Okay, uh, are there any questions about um, the municipal manager search? Brenda? No, Jeffrey? No, it sounds like very encouraging. Okay, fantastic. Okay, then next we will move on to the added item, which is candy distribution. And so as we did last year, um, we have a lot of money from the village and from the um, town to buy candy. Nikki has um, ordered tons of candy. Um, I think it's probably not a surprise to anybody who's been on High Street Golf and Maple that for Halloween that they go through a lot of candy. Um, they go through way more than we provide. And I think we probably give them 10 or 15% of what they, they do. Um, so I wanted to discuss with the trustees about um, putting out you know, a, a donation box for anybody who wants to donate candy to High Street, maybe down in Town Hall, maybe over at West. I've done it down in yeah. Town Hall before. A lot of people have had it in the past. Mm -hmm. I don't know about West. Yeah, I, or maybe there's not there. a bad idea. But I think this has been done previously as asking people to contribute just bags of candy. Yeah. Yeah, that's been at Max Market also. Oh, um, okay. That's not a bad idea. They have a, a bin as you're exiting in the past that uh, had for candy donations. Brenda, what do you think? Um, I think that's a great idea. 
I just think I think that we should all just contribute as much as we can to the different areas um, where we can donate. And I think that's the best we can do, maybe. Awesome. And Gabe, what will the Woodstock and be giving out this year? <laughs> we always have candy inside. Full size? Yeah, yes. Still kids, full the size. kids come in and run around and get handfuls of candy. Will there be a uh, spike cider for the adults? Uh, I don't know. I have to, I have to check and see if we're doing anything. I think it was probably pre-pandemic the last time we did something on the front lawn. Um, it's probably you know, three or four years ago. Because I think the right before the pandemic, I think that Halloween was a little, uh, the weather wasn't oh, that great. It was so rainy. Yes, it's rainy. But the year before that, I think we did have something on the lawn. So I will inquire. Yeah, no pressure or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wants cider and it's going to just push the kids towards uh, Maple Street. Exactly. It'll be fun. Um, the police are there. It's fine. <laughs> Throw all the kids to Robbie. He's good. Um, okay, well, then I will ask about, so we'll, we can set up a bucket at Town Hall. I'll, I'll talk to Max and Wes. Um, and then with the candy that we collect, um, we'll distribute it the weekend before. Um, to all of the houses, along with a letter, which is what we did last year. You have people to distribute it? I mean, if somebody wants to help me distribute it, because I did it last year. <laughs> I, I can't be reading that. Okay. When does it happen? The weekend before Halloween. So like that Friday or Saturday. Okay. And what does it entail? Where, where? Um, just throwing bags of candy with a letter attached to them onto people's porches. Okay. Yeah. So Saturday the 21. 29. There you go. Okay. I without looking at my schedule, I'll say yes. Okay. And I'll look at my schedule. I make a list and everything. <laughs> it's very fancy. I'd be happy to help after work. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Brenda. Okay. Is there any other discussion questions about Halloween on High Street and Golf and Maple? Okay, well, let's move on. Okay, let's move on to new business. So the number, the first item on the agenda under new business is a GDP measure for Woodstock. Uh, Bob Williamson, would you like to come up, grab a seat, tell us who you are and what you'd like us to consider? For the record, I'm Bob Williamson from South Woodstock. And I apologize if Southern Axle kicks in every now and then. <laughs> Just bear with me. I've heard that a number of times. Uh -huh. uh, Mark Twain once said, uh, it takes about two weeks to prepare a really good impromptu talk. Uh, but I think his real secret was his cigar and his pauses. I didn't bring any cigars today, but uh, I do have a handout for you after my presentation. And it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. I've sent you uh, the memo that I had. What I'm asking of the, the village trustees is to encourage our state lawmakers in Montpelier to repeal a law. It's the Vermont uh, Firearm Preemption Law, which prohibits local municipalities to set their own safety standards and also to regulate firearms if, if they so choose. And the, the, the provision is, was in that memo, the language, and we had an attorney with us uh, craft that uh, document. Um, a little bit about me and why I'm here before you. Um, as, a, as a youngster growing up in California, I grew up in a home with firearms. I had a 22 bolt action rifle. My father had a 22 semi-automatic rifle and a 38 pistol that he kept in his sock drawer. This is before we knew about the benefits safe storage many, many years ago. You can tell by the gray hairs. Um, and my brother was a collector for his entire life. I loved target shooting, but by the time I was able to drive, uh, I was more interested in dating girls and going <laughs> surfing in California than continuing the target shooting. It's still fun though. And I can remember the kick of my grandfather's 30-30. It was like a mule, but it was still pretty cool to shoot it. Um, 34 years ago, I was sitting on a commuter train, uh, coming home to my, uh, home in Winnetka, Illinois, which is about 22 miles north of Chicago. 
I'm listening to my Walkman radio to some music. Suddenly a news bulletin cuts in. So there'd been a shooting in a suburban school, Hubbard Woods Elementary School in Winneka. My kids were in that school. I didn't have a cell phone to call home at that time to see if Claire and Kate were okay. I had to sit on that train for, it seemed like an eternity. It was hell. I got to the station, my wife greeted me. She said, Claire and Kate are okay, but Nikki Carwin is dead. And the shooter was still at large in the neighborhood. There was a police helicopter flying overhead. It was as if the blades of the helicopter were knocking chunks of sky out of thin air and they were shattering at my feet. It changed the trajectory of my life after that. My kids were okay, but somebody else's child was killed. Five other kids were wounded and the shooter was still at large in the neighborhood. Um, that's not normal for something like that to happen in any community. Um, and it, it, it dawned on me, it was only dumb luck that spared my children that day. We need a lot better than dumb luck. Okay, 34 years later, in our own town, another sleepy little town, much like Winneka, we had a horrible incident last June, and we all remember that it was like. The village was shut down for 10 hours. There was trauma, I'm sure that was felt, and I'm sure you had to shut down your store at all. No, you didn't. I did not. The Yankee bookshop I, were telling me they, they did shut down. They were advised to do that. But uh, a lot of trauma still. I mean, the, the house up on uh, Slayton Terrace is boarded up. I salute Robbie and the police uh, for their very professional and courageous manner in which they dealt with that horrible incident. Nobody should have to deal with that. But I remember something that Robbie said uh, afterwards. You know, he, he said this before. On any given day, anything can happen anywhere. And it happened in our village. Um, then on last set, this past Saturday, I saw this happen in White River on Thursday. A fellow who was up and was going to put uh, artificial turf at, uh, I think it was the Cardigan Mountain School. And then he'd done some work at Dartmouth, Dartmouth College, laying artificial turf. His buddy, uh, was going down to get some breakfast. He got shot in the face by some guy with a gun. Just nuts. I mean, who knows why? Um, we can all speculate as the reasons why, but uh, I wanted to share a comment that his friend said after he, he got shot. He said, it just seems it's a way, way too common in our society today. It's scary. You watch it on the news and there's always a little distance between you and the violence. But here it is at your doorstep. This isn't normal either. So what I'm asking you is to encourage our state lawmakers to repeal this law. And I gave you, a, I sent an email last night. I put together reasons to repeal and I'll give that to you now. I held off giving it to you as an old teacher. I was told give out handouts afterwards because people will be reading that before they and I brought, brought one for Chief Robbie too that I'll give them to you as well. But there are a couple of these that I think are particularly pertinent. Uh, number one, number two, and uh, number 10. And attached is a, a statement given by a psychiatrist on the second page. Dr. Richard A. Feldman, a psychiatrist on the front lines of mental health. Uh, and uh, it's a fallacy to exclusively focus on mental health to explain gun violence. But I want to call your attention to item number one. And I'll just read it. Preemption is part of a national strategy of the NRA and the gun lobby. So they only have to lobby one government entity in each state, the state house. This has made our gun lobby's efforts, the gun lobby's efforts more successful and tougher to institute evidence-based safety policies. And firearms are now the leading cause of death among children and teens in our country. Preemption has been around for years. 2014, item two. Burlington passed three charter change gun reforms by 61% or more, but these charter changes have been stalled in Montpelier for eight years. Given all the gun problems Burlington now has, citizens there and Mural Weinberger surely wish those gun safety changes were in place. Then item 10. Um, Sarah Copeland's Kansas, who is a can Democratic candidate for the Secretary of State and a veteran state lawmaker. Mike Pichek, Democratic candidate for Treasury 
and Governor Scott's exemplary point person dealing with the COVID pandemic. You probably remember him every week. Did a tremendous job dealing with all that data. And David Zuckerman, uh, current Democratic candidate for Lieutenant Governor and former Lieutenant Governor, veteran state lawmaker, all say it's only luck that has prevented the mass shooting in Vermont. Are we willing to continue to rely on luck? As uh, village trustees of the great village of Woodstock, you have an opportunity to do something and, and play a role in making our community safer. Now, whether you agree or disagree with me, I really appreciate, appreciate your time tonight. Um, we all want a, a safe Woodstock, all of us, and we, we pull together a community. This is a picture I clipped. I do a lot of clipping from newspapers. <laughs> It's a little little boy after a shooting in the school, and you can see his tortured face. He looks like the Greek muse of tragedy, and you know that that's going to stay with that child. These are the children from, from Uvalde, Texas, last May. These are the real faces. We hear the statistics, but these are the real faces. Again, I want to thank you for your time. I'm happy to entertain any questions. But I really appreciate your making time for this, and hopefully you can. See to it. And if any of you would like to come to Spring uh, to uh, Montpelier with me in January, there's a place in my car. And I, ha I happen to bring some buttons if you like some buttons too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Thank so you. we'll uh, move along with our Rosenberg's rules here. Um, so you can say put uh, because the next item, uh, then uh, the next part of the process is are there technical questions from the trustees about um, about this uh, this Resolution? Well, it's simply changing the word city to village. Well, yeah. Okay. Brenda, do you have any technical questions? Gabe? I do not. Okay. Um, in that case, then we'll move on to, are there any citizen comments about this resolution? Is there anybody online, Brittany? There is. Okay. Um, in that case, I would entertain a motion to. Um... I'd like to quit this. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'd hate to put you on the spot, Robbie, but I'd like your thoughts as our chief. I don't support it. I don't support it again. Okay. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any other thoughts or questions on the resolution? Okay. I don't. Okay. Okay. Um, then I. Uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to accept um, this resolution to re repeal the, uh, to encourage the, the repealing of the Vermont firearms preemption law. So moved. Uh, is there a second? Second, all in favor say aye. Okay, any opposed? Okay, motion carries four to zero. Great. Thank you, Bob. I Thank appreciate you. your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, hey, next item on our agenda is under old business or under new business, rather, the sidewalk inventory introduction. This is a great one. Um, so I believe it was last year. Uh, uh, the Two Rivers was asked to do a inventory of all of the sidewalks in Woodstock. Um, as you know, some of the sidewalks are okay, some of them are not not okay at all. Um, and so this was uh, conducted in July, um, and we have been given a map and a list of all of the sidewalks in Woodstock. They are rated as good, fair, poor, critical, or potential, which means we could put a sidewalk there. Um, and so the question is, now that we have this fantastic information, um, what do we do with it, and how how shall we proceed? I would, I have a suggestion yes. that we have a um, minimum of two of the trustees. I would volunteer to be one mm -hmm. to um, work with any uh, perhaps we can get a, a citizen as well, okay. and uh, with a small committee um, study this and make recommendations back for the board's consideration. Yeah, I like it. Brenda, what do you think? Gabe? Uh, I, I, I think Jeffrey's idea is a good one, so. Okay. Then I would need one other trustee to work with me as a minimum. 
I would work with you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Brenda. All right, we'll get together and figure that out. And if you have any suggestions, someone else would be interested in that and bring them in. Um, okay. And Tom, uh, your sage advice, do we, if we bring someone else in, do we need to make this a formal committee that has to be warned and all those sorts of things? What are the... We do. If we bring maybe, any... Maybe it's just Brenda and I. At this okay, if it's just Brenda and Jeffrey looking it over, then uh, it's, since it's two people, that's it's... not a quorum. It's not a quorum, but it's, a, it's an official committee of the trustees. Uh, okay. The open meeting law is a plot. Okay. Okay. We don't have to use Zoom. <laughs> What's that? We don't, we're not required to use Zoom, however, as no, long as we publish when we're meeting yep. and where. Yep. Okay. 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 Um, so in either case. So we can do it with someone else yeah. as well. So maybe one or two other people from different geographic areas. Yeah, that. yeah, we're at two different geographic areas. We'll, yeah. we'll try to find people who are also at different. Okay. From, from where we are. Okay. As and long as I'm around, I would uh, like to participate as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Use them while we've got them. Yeah. <laughs> if they invite other people to join, do we have to approve them or can they just um, invite them? I think they can. Yeah. Okay. You can do it after the fact. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so there will be public meetings, but we don't have to. Uh, so do you want to take, when do you want to report back? December? Uh, no, January. January. That works. Okay. So Jeffrey and Brenda and TBD will let us know in January their recommendations because we can't start doing sidewalks right now anyway. Um, and again, for everybody here or online, um, this is available in the packet, which is on the town website. If you want to take a look at um, this study that was done for us. Any questions or comments about that before we move on to the next item? Next item on our agenda is a request to remove a tree at 26 Pleasant Street. Um, is there someone here to speak to that? Um, oh, come on up. Sit down and uh, tell us your name. I'm Tom McCoy. My wife and I own 26 Pleasant Street. And we've got a problem. <clears throat> Last October, the uh, sewer pipe backed up and dumped sewers all, all over our basement. We had a rotor rooter guy come in. He said, you've got a problem. You have a tree that's sitting directly on top of your pipe. You're going to have to use the rotor at least once every two years. And you're never really going to be at peace until you get rid of the tree. Well, in August, 10 months later, we had the exact same thing happen again. Sewage backed up all over our basement. And at that point, I, I, I incidentally, I like trees a lot. So I'm not, I was a little uh, reluctant to, to go and eliminate the tree in the beginning. I, I called Don Wheeler, the tree warden, and he said, here's my problem. He came and looked at the tree. I thought we were in agreement. And then he was sent me an email saying he was away and I should talk to Tom. And Tom said, Don doesn't want you to remove the tree. Well, actually, it's completely nonsensical. I, I don't mean to criticize Don. That's not the point. The tree is directly over the pipe. I have, I apologize, my printer is not too terrific. The first uh, slide shows that the pipe, sewage pipe goes through the front wall of our house at the bottom of the uh, wall, about eight feet underground. The second picture is taken from a the uh, street where the tree is, this one. Okay. And you can see that the tree is by the fence and the pipe comes out of the house, approximately between those two shutters. The third one shows the view from where the pipe comes out of our house. You can see again the post of my fence and the tree. Now here's the point. 
I either take the tree down or else I replace my pipe. If I replace my pipe, I dig up the tree, I dig up the new sidewalk, I dig up the new road, spend thousands of dollars, the tree comes out anyway. Uh, so it doesn't make any sense to me. I think we should just get rid of the tree and see if the problem ameliorates. If it doesn't, then I will have to put in a new service. Is there a written report from uh, Roto Rooter or any? Uh, no, I didn't get a report. Mediation. Okay. I'd like to hear, do, hear from Don. Really. Uh, yeah. Don, can you come up and uh, give us your assessment? Sure. Uh, uh, my theory was that. Um, we try to save trees in any way we can. Our shade trees and street trees are a valuable asset to the town. And I wasn't clear on, you know, not being able to see where the pipe runs and um, if the pipe was compromised in any way. Um, I was saying, uh, save the tree if we can. Um, if the if the pipe can be moved or replaced without affecting the tree, that is the that is the ultimate answer because replacing any tree is expensive and a situation we don't want to get into. So um, it's uh, not being a plumber and knowing the situation with pipe, I'm just uh, wanting to save the tree in any way we can. And how the tree is affecting the pipe is uh, something is hidden like that, it's hard to tell. May I uh, add one more point I should have uh, raised before? I contacted um, Sai Benoit, who works at Arborscape, who did uh, Degree Planning, you should know him. And he proposed that the cost would be $1,050, which I would propose to pay myself. For removal of the tree? Yes. So, so I go back to, to just my question. Um, so th there hasn't been any, any uh, uh, like a wind river that's come in and given scoped the pipe or where the pipe leads. Well, that's who came in. Oh, they did. Yeah. Okay. And so they, they should have, they should have given you a thumb drive or something that would show where that crack would be. And if you, if you could see if the tree is, um, Impacting the well, the last time around, we actually went down into the basement okay. where they ran a light at the end of a you know camera into the pipe, and we looked at the pipe, but we didn't get a written report. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they typically do give you a, a thumb drive that has a picture. They scope it, and they'll take a look at where the pipe, or if there's an issue with the pipe, and and where the the issue I'll, will be. I'll pull them up and yeah, because they could give you that, and you know I'm all for trees, but you know we also want to not inconvenience our our uh, people in our community um, and, and have them incur unnecessary costs to try to move a pipe. Um, yeah. And like I said, I'm all, all for the trees, but it's it, we also have to be cognizant of the fact that we have to let people be able to, to sure. lead a regular life and not have to worry about some sewage backup. There are situations where the tree is just, was planted in the wrong spot. Yeah. Compromises, utilities yeah. like that. Yeah. So, I, is, it, is it a healthy tree? Yeah, it's a healthy. It's a tree. Uh, By the way, I'm the only guy on the block. I've got two trees in front of my house instead of one. Everybody else seems to have one. Uh, I have a, a technical question um, that somebody may or may not be able to answer. So, if the tree, presumably the roots, yeah. have gone through and are blocking the pipe, right? Cutting down the tree doesn't take those roots out of the pipe. No, but you cut the tree and you you grind the stump, and but, the, the, I don't believe the tree is, roots are going to be a living entity that will continue to endure. But they'll still be underground and still be in your pipe until however long it takes for roots to curl up and die. I have no idea. Maybe Don knows that. I mean, I'm, my question is, if you cut down the tree and the roots are still through the pipe, we're still back at square one. Like you're going to have to replace the pipe anyway, right? 
No, I, well, I, I don't I don't actually think so. I mean, the, if it's the roots that are doing it, if this is your pipe and these are your roots, right? And you take off the tree, the roots are still in your pipe. Well, hold on. I just had the roots all taken out in uh, August. Yeah. Was, when River came, they've come twice. They came in August. Okay, so the, okay, the roots are no longer in the pipe. Right, but the pipe the pipe is damaged. But the, yeah, the pipe is the pipe is uh, the typical clay we have. It's a three foot section. The seams and the, the roots get in through the seams. But, but are they able to seal the pipe as it is? Okay, they've removed the roots by going into the pipe, right? Yeah. And when, is there any way that they can seal the reseal the pipe from the inside? I don't know. Because it seems like perhaps that way they could repair the pipe and the tree still lives. I do right. believe a way that they can repair that pipe from within. And my other question would be, if the roots compromise the pipe, does the pipe have the ability to leak into the ground? Did they give you any information about that? No, they said when we looked through the camera, mm -hmm. there was a little standing water in the, in the pipe, but that's sort of normal stuff. Okay, but that pipe normally carries water or sewage? Sewage. Sewage. Okay. So when I should say not water, liquid. When you look, yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever looked through a camera in the pipe. It's pretty, pretty dark and <laughs> liquid, but it's not in living color. So, but that presumably takes sewage out from your house to the sewer system. Right. The the main sewer line runs right under the street. So, are there holes in the pipe that sewage can currently leak out of? It must be. How, how did the roots get into it? I'm trying to figure out if there's a hole in the pipe that is then leaking sewage into the ground. Did they give you any information about that? No, I don't have any information. Because if that were the case, then that then that would mean you have to replace the pipe, and we certainly don't want sewage going into the ground. So I, I would be interested to know the answer to that, because I have no idea. Um, but I would need the answer to that before, because if, if the pipe has to be replaced anyway, because sewage is leaking out of it, then the pipe has to be replaced. And if to replace the pipe, we have to take away the tree, then that's a conversation we certainly need to have. Or what I was suggesting, can the pipe be repaired for internally? Yeah. Um, where it lies now. Yeah, so I think I need more information before I can make a decision. Okay, so to be clear, you want information as to whether the pipe can be, is leaking? Yes, I'd like to know if it's leaking. Is there and ground. whether it can be repaired from the inside. Yes. yes. Yeah. When River can also provide that video, because that will show whether, you know, what the situation is down there, too. That might be helpful in forming an opinion okay. or decision. Yeah. I will do that in the report. Awesome. Thank great. you so much. Thank you, I appreciate your time. Okay, uh, next. Item on the agenda is other business. Is there any other business to come before the trustees this evening? Crowd, trustees, no? Okay. Uh, in that case, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from the 13th of September and the 23rd of September. Jeffrey, tell us what you found. Is Nikki still on? Are you there, Nikki? I'm here. Oh, geez, Nikki. I just, you know, I just wish I could have found an error, but I couldn't. And so <laughs> I begrudgingly say congratulations. And, uh, we are, we're all wishing you all the best, by the way, with what's up with the wonderful event that's upcoming in your life, Nikki. And Thank you. Uh, I move to approve both sets of excellent minutes. Oh, my gosh. Without a single grammatical error oh. or one of any other type. Is this you know, three months straight? Three months straight. Three months straight. What? It is. And, but I went years fighting an error. <laughs> well done, Nikki. <laughs> years. <laughs> you were able to keep Jeffrey quiet. But, but maybe person that can Nikki's do that. out of action next time. We'll see how good Brittany is. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> the gauntlet has been thrown. <laughs> Okay, well, I would second your motion, Jeffrey. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes for September 13th and September 23rd, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And with that, oh my goodness, at 7.40 p.m., uh, I, would, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved.
Second. Wow. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hey, well done, team. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Good Brenda. night, Brenda.